Today we'll get to relive our childhoods in Blender because today we are learning about how to put materials on objects in Blender and make them colorful. And at the end of this tutorial, I have a really fun project for you that you can color yourself and play around with. But before we dive into learning how to add materials onto objects in Blender, here is a quick reminder if you are looking to effortlessly create stunning artwork and save valuable time. We have got a treasure trove of ready-to-use assets waiting for you on our website 3D.design. Let the creative journey begin. Hey, Sam from 3D here. In the previous videos, we learned about how to move around in the viewport, how to scale our objects, move them around, rotate them, and all of that good stuff. But today we are going to learn how to put materials on it so you can make your objects look more interesting and give them different materials like glass or colorful metal or all sorts of stuff. So let's jump right into it. Today we are going to be playing around with this little scene. It's pretty simple. All I did was just go press shift to add objects, add a plane, and then add a monkey and rotate it. So it sits nicely on the plane. Oh, it isn't sitting nicely. There we go. It is sitting nicely on the plane. We'll be coloring the floor and we'll be playing around with the monkey and try to give it some different fun colors. To jump right into adding materials to your objects, all you need to do is click here on this material properties tab right here. Once you click it, you will see this new button. Now make sure you have selected the object you want to give the material to. For me, it's going to be this monkey head. Now I will click the monkey head and you can see I have selected it because there is a green outline on it. If I just click the new material button now, it will give our monkey a new material. But as you can see, nothing changed. We can remove the material and add a new material again. But nothing on our monkey is changing, because for it to show changes, we need to go into the material preview or the tab also known as viewport shading. Since the first video, we have just been moving around in the default viewport, which is very gray and bland and very boring looking. Today, we are going to spice things up. And to spice things up and go into the viewport shading view, all you need to do is go up here and click the second little button and click it. And there you go. Everything is white now, but still very boring. But if we come down to the material properties tab and add a new material to our objects, and then you see this base color option right here. If I change this base color, you'll see our monkey head is changing colors as we change it down here. I can give it any color we want. So I am going to give it a slight skin color. So the monkey has skin now. This might be very cursed for some people. Now, once you add the material, you will see all of these options right here. So, I am going to explain them to you one by one. Firstly, here is the name of the material. I am going to name the material Monkey Skin. And, as you will see, our material will change its name to Monkey Skin. Then, there is the preview window. That means we can see our material and how it's looking on different shapes without the need to add them in our viewports. I can see them on a plane, on a sphere, on a cube, on some hair and all sorts of different stuff and even water. Then you will see the main options that we'll be using to modify our materials. The first is going to be base color, which is just used to change your colors of the material. Metallic is pretty much what the name suggests. You use this option to give your objects a more of a metallic look. If I use this slider and I completely crank it up, you will see our material is looking much more shiny now. Let me just right click this monkey head and shade it smooth just so we can see the material better. And as you can see, it's already looking like a copper metallic shiny color. To make it more shiny, we use the roughness shader. If I slide the shader up, that means our material won't be shiny at all. But if I slide the roughness shader down, our material will get shinier and shinier as we move the slider down. And look, it's so cool looking now, our monkey is so metallic. Let me just slide the metallic down. And let me just move the roughness up, so it looks more like a skin shader. You will see so many other options in this tab, like subsurface, specular, transmission, cold, sheen. But you don't really need to worry about that right now, because you won't be needing them if you are a beginner. Other than these values up here, what I'll be discussing is the transmission and the emission. So let's talk about the emissions option first. If I click this drop down, another color will appear and a strength slider. Now, if I change the color of this thing to, let's say, blue, as you can see, nothing is happening because our strength slider is at zero. If we put this to one, you will see our color changes. If I increase this value, as you can see, our object will start glowing. And if I decrease this value, our object will stop glowing again. I can make it white completely, I can make it pink, I can give it an orange glow and all kinds of cool colors. Now the other menu we'll be talking about is the transmission menu right here. Just click it and you will see another weight slider. Now this is to me one of the most fun sliders to play around with. Because if you slide this all the way up to one and then move down the roughness completely, as you can see, our material has more of a glass look now. 
and we can see through it a bit and it looks like a transparent glass. But be sure to get this result, you have to have the transmission made completely at 1 and the roughness at completely 0. Otherwise, you won't be able to see the glass effect. As you can see, by combining all of these options, you can make some really, really cool shaders. Some glass shaders, some metallic looking shaders and a lot more stuff. But you might be wondering, what to do if you want to give the same object different materials? Like, what do we do if we want to color the eyes of our monkey? Now I have a solution for that as well. All you need to do to give the same object different materials is you need to click this plus icon over here, which says add material. If you click it, you will get the option of adding a new material again. If you add that new material, you will have two materials in your slot, a monkey skin and a material name, just material. We are going to change this name to eye color. And then we are going to change the base color to completely black. But what's this? No change on the monkey again. Well, to apply this material to a specific part of the monkey, you need to first go into the edit mode. How do you go into the edit mode? As you go up here, you click edit mode. And then there you go. You will be in edit mode. Now, what the edit mode does, we are going to explain in a later video. But for now, I'll get you through how you can apply materials through the edit mode. So after you go into the edit mode, you need to go into the faces right here, face select. Then just click anywhere outside of your object and it will stop glowing blue. After it does that, you need to select all the faces that you need to color black and to select multiple areas at the same time you have to hold shift. And then click anywhere you want and it will select all of the items at the same time. Now once we have that selected, all we need to do is click this material right here, the second material, the eye color, and then click assign. And there you go, that looks horrifying. Our monkey has a black eye. Now I think it will be better if you just change the color to white. There we go. Our monkey eyes have a white color. What if we want to add another color, which is the black inside of the eye? That will be the exact same process like we did before. Click the plus icon here, add a new material. Change the name of material to inside inside eye color. Change the base color to black. And then you have to go into edit mode from up here. First, select the part of the eyes you need to color black. Then choose the second material you just created and click assign. And you can just go back to object mode. And there you go. Our monkey has a cool looking eye now. Now in real life, you have seen that eyes are kind of shiny. So I just told you how you can make some material shiny. You have to go to the material and just slide down the roughness slider. And as you can see, our eyes are becoming shinier and shinier as we slide the slider down. If we want to change the shininess of the white color, we will do the same. Go into the eye color material and then change the roughness of that one as well. And both of our materials are pretty shiny. With this method, you can add as many materials to the same object as you want. Like, if I want to color the mouth red, I will just click the plus icon again. Add new, like give it a red color, and then go into the edit menu, select the faces that we want to color red, which is the inside of the mouse. Again, the thing, how you can do this is by pressing and holding shift, and clicking on the faces you want to color, and then choose the material, and then click assign. If we go back to edit mode again, look, our monkey has a red mouth now, like he has lipstick on. That's pretty cool. We can do all of this with any kind of object, not just the monkey. Let's move the monkey to the side and I'm going to add in a cube. How do we add the materials to the cube? Same thing, we hit no, we change the colors. We change the roughness if we want to make it shiny. We can even make it metallic if we want to. If we want to give any of the sides some other color, we have to do the same thing. Plus, new, change the color to let's say blue. Go up into the edit mode while the object is selected. Choose the face. After choosing this menu, choose the face you want to give the color to. Select the material and click assign. And go back to edit mode. And there you go. What I just showed you is a very simple way of giving colors or different colors to the same object. But if we want to give the objects more complex textures, we can't really do that here because we are very limited with the options. So if we want to give the objects complex textures, we need to do this. Just slide this bar up at the bottom. Click this window over here and it will give you a lot of options. Just ignore these options and click Shader Editor. The options we have on the right, now we can see them in this little menu over here. But what is this? Before we go any further, I need to explain to you how materials or colors work in Blender. You see, Blender uses a color system which is also known as the node-based system. Node-based systems are very popular and are used by many, many other softwares like Substance Designer, Houdini, Cinema 4D and many more. Node systems allow you to work in a very non-destructive way, which just means that you can change anything at any point in your material creation journey. 
Any changes you do in the node system, you can change at any point in time which makes the node system very flexible and easy to work with. You might be wondering what are nodes in the first place. So let me explain it in a very basic way to you. Let's think of it like this. Let's say you have an object. In the node system, what you can do is you can make a node called color. And then you can plug that color into your object. And voila, that color is assigned to the object. But what if we want to give our object more of a glossy look? What we can do is in between that color and our object, we can add a mixed node. Then we can add a glossy node, connect both the glossy and the color node into the mixed node. Now, after combining two of those nodes, we will have a glossy color. That is the simplest and the most basic way I can explain the node system to you. Now, if you combine a lot of different materials and a lot of different nodes, which you don't really need to worry about right now because the point is not to master everything, the point is just to learn how they work. If you combine all of these different nodes, you can make a lot and a lot of cool textures and shaders. Even though I have explained the node system to you, I won't really be diving much deep into that because it'll become really confusing for you. And for now, I want you to understand how these options on the right work and just play around with them for a bit. But I will teach you guys how to add a texture to your objects. A texture is a high quality image with different formats. And after combining them, it allows you to give your objects some realistic textures like concrete, wooden textures, wooden tiles, wooden floors, lava and many more. There are many websites from where you can download high quality textures. There are many paid ones like texture.com and Polyagon. But there are free ones as well like Polyhaven. So let's get started. Let's just quickly download the texture and then I'll teach you how you guys can apply it to the object so as you can see. I am on this website called Polyhaven. After you go to this website you need to scroll down and browse textures. And you see there are so many high quality textures of brick, stone, walls, word and many more and the fun part is all of them are free so let's look for a very cool wood floor texture. So we go into this word menu we search floor and then look at that there are so many cool ones. But I think I am liking this one at the top the best, wood floor worn. I am going to click it and it's showing you the preview of how that tile will look and how that material will look. Now to download it, we don't really need 4K for this, I would prefer to just use the 1K one. So you can click this one and download. After you download it, you will see this kind of folder in your download menu. So you just have to unzip it. I'm sure you know how to do that. So I'll just unzip it using Winner AR. Now after I have unzipped it, I can just go to this textures folder and there we have all the textures that we're going to need. There is a color, there is a displacement, there is a roughness and there is a normal map. You don't need to worry for now what these maps do, but I'll tell you how you can apply them to your object in Blender. So now that we're back into Blender, we need to put that floor texture on this little plane over here. What we'll do is click the plane texture, add a new material to it. I'm going to name it wood floor. You have to make sure that you have this menu right here opened. How you can open it is you can just drag it down from the bottom. Click this button and go to shader editor. The shortcut for this is shift F3 as well as you can see right here. So once you are in this menu, before doing anything or before proceeding, you need to go up here in the edit menu, preferences. And in the add-ons, you need to search node wrangler. So once you search node wrangler, you need to enable this add-on before moving forward. Be sure that you have this add-on enabled in the preferences. Once you have it enabled, you can save it from down here and click exit. Then you have to click this principal BSDF shader right here. You will see the green outline. And to apply the texture we just downloaded, we just need to press CTRL, SHIFT and T while we have this principal BSTF selected. And it will open this menu for us. I am just going to navigate where I have the textures, save and you can see all of these files. I am just going to select all of them and press principal texture setup. And there you go. Look at that now. We have a floor texture on our little floor right here now. As you can see, it's just a very plain image. It's not actually a floor. But if you look at it from the top, it looks pretty realistic. And I will show you a little trick as well. If you want to increase the size of the texture or decrease it, you can just move down here. And in this little area, in the mapping area, press Shift 8. Search and search for value. Click that and place it right here. You need to connect this one to this one, this scale option. Again, you don't need to worry about what these things are doing right now. I'm just explaining to you so you can get started. So after you plug this in, you can just increase this slider to increase the size of that texture as you can see over here. As I increase the slider, the texture will increase as well in size. So I think this looks pretty good. 
it's not just this. If you go to this website and download any of the given textures on here, you can apply them the same way to anything you want. Let's say you have a wall and you want to download and apply this dried rock texture to it or this stone tiles texture. You can just do the same process I showed you for this floor. And then you can apply it to the wall as well. I hope you understand much better now how you can apply materials to your objects. Apply multiple materials to the same object and also apply textures in your scenes. The textures can be many as I showed you and you can download them from various websites like Polygon, Textures Dots, Con or Polyhaven. But before I sign off for this video, I have a special project prepared for you. So as you can see on the screen, this is the project that I have prepared for you and the link will be in the description of the video. What I need you to do is download this project and it has everything already set up for you. When you download this project, I just want you to play around with the materials. All the objects in the scene give them different materials. Maybe glass materials, maybe wooden textures. Download some more textures from Polyhaven like I showed you and try applying them to all the objects in the scene and try to have fun with it because we often forget. That's the best part, to have fun while learning. Be sure to share these images of what you do with the scene in our Discord channel. Don't forget to check out our vast library of 3D character models at 3D.design. I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.